Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Brian with DD214 Transport. Please like, subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications. Also, uh, take a walk over to the Facebook page. Sign up for that. We've got a great bunch of people over there, guys. Really good group. Okay, today we're going to talk about how to prepare and survive your new entry audit. Now, we've been talking about this audit for a little bit. Uh, I got my notice on, well, this letter's dated on the 25th of August. I got it last week sometime. Um, it basically lays out what they want. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through it step by step, okay? And I'm going to sort of tell you what to expect, what to prepare for, and where to go once you get all your documents prepared. Okay, so I got this letter, all right? And it says, right from the top, action required. Submit documents to complete required safety audit. All right? Now, good morning. Have a cup of coffee. Sit down. This is going to be kind of a long video, and... Uh, I want to go in depth with the, some of this because this isn't something you can skim over. It's not something you can put some things in and other thing, leave other things out. This is going to be an audit. It's going to be very detailed and it's something that once you get it, your MC between 8 and 18 months, you're going to have to do this audit. In, the very, <clears throat> in one of the first videos, I said to get organized. Well, if you follow that little tidbit of advice, this will save you. It saved me. I followed my own advice. I got organized and uh, it, it's helped out a lot. And even though I felt like I was organized and I, and, and I am pretty much, but let me tell you something. This stuff is detailed. It is extremely detailed. And they want to match, okay? For example, they want to match what your logs say versus your fuel receipts versus your bills of laden, those kind of things. Okay, so action required. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration is responsible for ensuring the safe operation of commercial motor vehicles on our na nation's highways. Because your company has recently become begun operating in interstate commerce, the MFCSA is required, means everybody's going to get it, guys, required to conduct a new entry safety audit of your company's operations. All right, so you're not being picked on. You're not, you're not being anything. It is their rule that it is a requirement between eight, six and 18 months, I'm guessing. Uh, they're going to do a safety audit. They want to see how you're running your company. To make sure that you're running it safely. Okay. The safety audit will include a review of your company's safety management controls in the following areas as applicable. Drivers hours of service and licensing. Vehicle maintenance and inspection driver qualification, including drug and alcohol testing requirements, accidents, insurance, operating authority, and other safe safety and transportation records, including any requirements of transporting hazardous materials. All right, so they are really going through it. Okay, please submit copies 
of applicable documentation or written explanation for the failure to submit the documentation via the safety audit website and it gives you a website address okay no later than September 14th well guys it's September 7th so I'm on um, or 20 calendar days from the date of this letter you will need your pin and it gave it will give you your pin number and your USDOT number to log on to this particular site. Additional documentation may be required. Descriptions of requested documents are enclosed. Submission of all documents required for your operations may negate the need to conduct an on-site audit. New entry safety audit at your place of business and may therefore reduce the amount of time to complete the required audit process. Okay, so they want to make sure you have all this documentation in place. Upon review of the submitted documentation, a safety auditor will inform you of any further requirements on your part. Big black bold letters, guys. Failure to provide the necessary documentation requested to perform the safety audit in accordance with 49 CFR section 385.337 parentheses B could result in your new entry registration being revoked and your company being placed out of service. Sincerely. Um, so, yeah, so it's a serious thing, and I want everybody to, to watch this and, and understand how serious it is. So on page two, excuse me, on page two, they go back, and it's a information for new safety audit documentation, submission. The below applicable documents must, listen to the verbiage, be submitted via the safety audit website, new entrant, no later than 20 calendar days from the date of this letter. The website listed above provides more information for each document requested, including information regarding the type of carrier operations for whom the documents are supplied. All right, we're going to go, I'm going to show you some pictures of these, uh, of this situation, or of that uh, website here in a minute. And I actually got a video to show everybody how to use the website, which is pretty cool. And I will say, after going on to the website and navigating it and looking at it and seeing what they offer, it's pretty tight. They've got it locked down very well. And... If you have any questions, they have a booklet that can walk you through it step by step. They have a video, which I'm going to play on this video to show you how to get through the website and how to navigate. Very clear. It's a very good video. Very impressed. Uh, so, this is what they're asking for. If you didn't know, you're going to know now. All carriers must submit the following. A driver's list, which will include um, date of birth, first and last names, dates of hire, license number, and the state for which they are licensed. A vehicle list, tractors and trailers owned by the carrier along with associate, associated unit numbers, VINs, and plates. Include electronic logging device or automatic onboard recording device. Make model year as applicable for each vehicle. Okay? So, they want the, the code for your ELD 
place by the vehicle that it is in. That way when they start looking at the different logs, they can match the code with the vehicle because on my logs, it, it pays the vehicle name and the logging device name. Okay, proof of insurance. All carriers must have insurance significant to satisfy the minimal public liability requirements. What they want here is your MCS 90. They're, that's what they're asking for, which is a cover, a document signed by the insurance company. You should have it. It's in my cab book. If you follow along, a lot of the stuff they're asking for will be in your cab book. Okay. Okay, now the following documents do not need to be submitted by agricultural or farming related operations that stay within 150 air miles. Now, most of us aren't that, so what we're going to have to have is a driver's medical certificate. All commercial motor vehicle drivers are required to go undergo a physical at least every two years. So this needs to be in, in the file. Uh, so they're asking to upload one medical certificate. The driver's motor vehicle record. So if it's on, if you've got it, for me, it's just me. So I've got myself listed and I've got my MBR underneath. Your driver's license, front and back copy your driver's license. This way they can look at the truck and trailer and see if you're qualified to run that. Now this is where it gets very, very, this is where it gets really technical. Records of each driver's status must be maintained for a minimum of six months. So what they want is to submit 30 consecutive days of logs for one driver along with supporting documents. See that? All that had to be scanned in for one month. Toll receipts, reports, fuel receipts, or fuel receipt reports. Record of on duty must include one interstate trip. So, the last 30 days of me sitting at the house doesn't qualify. I had to go back to June and submit that. Now, it does allow you to submit the electronic log, to submit the, the electronic HOS records. You can go to the website and it gives you, um, it gives you the information on how to do that. Now, what I did was I gave them an individual log for every day of the month of June, okay? Um, if you have time cards, they want you to submit the time cards. So, yeah, a lot. A lot of stuff went in just for the logs. And I'm assuming, and you have to assume, they're going to compare, let's say, the date and time that you fueled with what your log says. I'm assuming. Okay, vehicle inspections. All, of course, we know this, all equipment must be kept in good working condition. Upload one copy of an annual inspection or equivalent for one commercial motor vehicle. The truck's new, I had one inspection done on it. Hmm. Now what I did here was I also submitted maintenance records because they were easy. I logged them into my my uh, ELD as they happened, 
and I just pushed a button and it popped up. So I submitted that as well. Now, if you have a CDL, if you have a CDL and you're running Hotshot, you must submit, well, first of all, you must be in a consortium, a drug and alcohol consortium. And they are asking for drug and alcohol test results. Motor carriers operating vehicles requiring a CDL must test drivers for illegal substances and alcohol levels periodically and, bef and before they are hired, okay? So you want to upload proof for pre-employment drug test. With that, they want a copy of the chain of custody and the test results, okay? Upload proof of a random drug testing program and a list of drivers in the program. With me, it's just one. It's just me. So, upload proof of a random testing program and a list of drivers in the program. Proof of the random program can consist of signed and dated contract between your company and a third party, receipt of payment for a random testing program and enrollment, or a letter from the TPA verifying enrollment in a random drug testing program. List of drivers enrolled in the program and uh, list of any positive test, tested drivers in the program. I'm going to tell you now, they're getting rid of these people who are doing drugs and driving commercial motor vehicles. It's going to be, it's not a bad thing, but if you do drugs, even if it's just pot and that's in your system, when you take your urinalysis test or your drug test, you're going to end up eventually losing your commercial license. And by the way, that goes on a record too. Sort of like a blacklist record. At some point you've you've tested positive. Alright, so all carriers that have been involved in the crash in the past three years well, I'm not three years old, so I just submitted a document that said no accident. So they have to have the accident reports. Um, yeah, accident register, report and register. All right, if you operate hazmat, which we don't operate hazmat, so I just sent a thing that said we don't operate in hazmat. Uh, you must, motor carriers, Operating vehicles that haul hazmats must retain shipping papers for each type of hazmat transported. Upload the shipping papers for each type of hazmat transported. Okay, that's what they want. All right, now, that's all they want. So, you know, easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? You would think that uh, it's extremely hard but it's really not. Don't get all freaked out about it. I kind of freaked out a little bit about it because I was like, damn. But when I went back and started pulling stuff out of my files and out of my cab book, it was all there. It, I'd already scanned most of it in. But at the end of the day, when I get ready to submit, this is what I'm submitting. All right, so let's talk about... Let's talk about... What happens after you get all your files together? You've got everything scanned in. You have everything ready to go. And the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to the website that they give you on here. I'm not going to read this out. It's a long website name and there's just no sense in it. But I am going to put a picture up. Okay, so in this picture, this is the website. You're going to go to this website, and right here, you'll see, receive an off-site safety audit letter. That's what I received. 
so you log on okay once you log on it, or once you click right there it'll take you to this page and you will need your DOT number your US DOT number and the pin and the pin the pin is right here in your letter okay they give you your pin so you'll have it so you key in that pin once you key in the pin and hit submit you get to into a welcome page now this is the page where everything happens okay now this is the new entrance welcome page and I want you guys to drop down here real quick and look right here is my auditor's name her email address and her office phone number okay that's who's going to be looking at my paperwork if you scroll further down it gives you a list of documents with Here's your driver-related documents, your vehicle-related documents, and your carrier-related docu okay, documents. Now, on the left side, if you see, you got a driver's, you have uh, an overview, a driver's license, and each time you click on one of those, it'll tell you what you need to have. Now, when you look to the right, Okay, if you look over to the right, you will see a upload here and then a view documentation. Okay, all right, so it's best for me to stop here and I'm going to play this video for you because it will tell you how to navigate this site. And I want you guys to understand this and be ready for it and it'll show you what you can do and also tell you that where it has those links on the left and it was a question I was asking myself do I have to like all the drivers information do I have to put there or under the license no you don't you can actually click on the upload here folder and upload all your documents at one time so that's the way I'm gonna do it okay so let's watch this video and I'll be back with you in one second in this video, we are going to walk through how to navigate the new entrant web system, otherwise known as NEWS. On NEWS, you will find important information about what types of documents you will need to supply, along with information on how to upload or fax these documents to us. When you log in, you'll be directed to this overview page. From here, you can access high-level information that will help you gather the materials you need to complete your safety audit and understand the regulations that apply to those documents. You'll also be able to upload documents and view previously uploaded documents from the overview page. Here, you see a list and brief description of documentation you may be asked to submit to show compliance with various safety management practices. It's important to note that not all safety management process areas apply to all types of carriers, and that your auditor may request additional documentation than that outlined on this page. Another important resource is the Motor Carrier's Guide to Improving Highway Safety, which you can access by clicking on this link here. This document provides detailed information on the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations. On the left side of the screen are tabs with more information about each of the safety management process areas and areas of operation. Here on the Rods tab, which is short for Records of Duty Status, otherwise known as Logs, you see an overview of how to properly fill out a driver's log and links to more information. At the bottom of the page, you will find information about types of carriers that may be excluded from this specific regulation. In this white box on the right side of the screen, you will see a list of documents you will be asked to submit if the safety management process applies to your company. Again, it's important to note that not all safety management processes will apply to your company. Your safety auditor can help you to clarify which processes apply to you and what documentation you will be required to submit. You will also find links to more information, including example documents, the full text of the laws and regulations, and additional resources. At the top of this white box, you will also see this Upload Here button. The preferred method for submitting your documents is by uploading to news directly or by using a news-generated fax cover sheet to fax your documents directly to your record within the new system.
The Upload Here button is available on each of the tabs, including the Overview page. Each Upload Here button works exactly the same way. This means that you may submit any or all of your documents on any page of the site. You do not have to submit your driver information on the driver page, your insurance information on the insurance tab, etc. You can submit any documents from any page. You can also submit documentation in multiple uploads as you review the requirements, or you may collect all required documentation and upload in a single batch. To upload documents, click Upload Here on any of the tabs. Click Browse to select a document to upload from your computer. If you'd like, you may enter a document title. This may help the auditor determine which required document you uploaded. Please note that the maximum file size allowed is 10 megabytes. If your package of documentation exceeds the maximum file size, you may upload documents in batches or submit documents via fax by using the customized fax cover sheet. Finally, click Upload, and you will see this message appear at the bottom of the upload box confirming your upload was successful. If you'd like to fax your documents, you must do so by downloading and using your customized fax cover sheet. A link to your fax cover sheet is available on each of these tabs and in the document submission pop-up. Print this document and include it as the cover page when you fax your documents. This will ensure your fax documents get uploaded immediately and directly to your specific record and news. Once you've submitted your documents, you may wish to confirm everything was successfully uploaded. To do that, click on the View Uploaded Documents button on the Overview page. A new window will appear listing all the documents you have uploaded. You may click on a document to open it. Note that only documents you uploaded directly to news or faxed in using your specific fax cover sheet will appear here. You will not be able to delete a document after you have uploaded it to news. If you've uploaded an incorrect document or uploaded the same document multiple times, contact your auditor to let them know. You can find your auditor's contact information in the initial document request letter you received. If you have questions about completing the safety audit, uploading documents, or navigating news, you should reach out to your safety auditor directly. If you have additional questions or are unable to reach your auditor, you may reach out to your state office. To find the appropriate contact information, click on the Contact Us button at the top of the page and find your state. Please also take a moment to submit your feedback about using the New Entrant web system or the operations of the New Entrant Safety Audit via the Feedback button at the top of the page. We rely on your honest feedback to continue to improve news in the safety audit process. Thank you for your commitment to safety. Lives depend on it. Okay, so you saw the video, very easy. There's, there's really not much to this. I'm really impressed with how the site is laid out. There's also a booklet. If you need a little extra help, there is a guide, a printable guide, right up above the video selection. Awesome. I'm, I mean, it just breaks it down so simply. And, and I'm, again, two thumbs up for you guys. You did a good job. All right, so here I go. I have all my documents. I have everything that I think that I'm going to need. I scanned the full month of receipts, um, everything they ask for, maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to click on upload here. I'm going to select all of my documents. And submit it's gone now because one thing that video told you if you don't remember is that you can't delete it once you submit so so there it is big deep breath and uh, a good bit of work but guys get organized keep your stuff squared away keep it where you can find it because they're going to ask for it if you need anything, please reach out. You know, I'll help everybody I can. All you first responders, you veterans, you know what? Even you civilians. Have a great day. This is Brian with DD214. Remember, nothing you'll ever put on that truck, pick up or put down, is worth your life or anybody else's life. So be safe. If you guys need help getting started, you got Miss Mary. can give you a hand. You got Larry. Uh, for factoring, and Alan for ELD. So if you need any of that, I'll leave links below. Thanks. We'll see you next time.